Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting day of uh, CMSC 341, where today we're going to discuss leftist heaps. Wait, what are you doing here? But also, hello. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Okay. I actually, I don't know how many of you, I have a question, how many of you watch uh, Wintergarten? He's a guy, he's a Swedish guy, he makes, uh, <clears throat> he makes little, uh, well he's making a marble machine, I'm not sure if you've seen that video. Um, so. He just released a video today, and it actually, uh, it's, it's vaguely relevant. Well, I'm not going to show you everything from today's video. Don't worry, I'm not spoiling everything, but I will show you the first few seconds of it. And the reason why um, is because it actually kind of uh, mimics the, the functionality of a, of a, a skew heap, or a leftist heap to some extent. So. So I just want you to watch and see. It's actually kind of cool. So uh, it'll only take like 10 or 20 seconds, but uh, I think it's kind of a neat little thing. So let's watch it. And uh, yeah, so basically, notice the position of these marbles. They are kind of holding the holding one of one set of positions. And then when you start and uh, let the thing go, You'll notice that they flip back and forth, so we'll, we'll have to see that in a few seconds when he releases one marble at a time. But the, the point here is his goal, which is kind of cool, is you see to evenly distribute the marbles throughout the four channels. And that's exactly what our goal in a, uh, for a skew heap is, right? Our goal for a skew heap is as we're inserting to kind of equally distribute the marbles or the nodes throughout the different uh, pathways that you can take. So. Here's, here's a little bit better where he's doing it like one marble at a time, I think. And you'll see exactly how it does it. It does it by whenever a marble is inserted, it flips its position to the other side, and then it kind of knocks one through. And you notice that they kind of have a memory where one marble is kind of remembering where the last one was inserted, and so it kind of always uh, assures kind of an equal distribution. And this is exactly, I mean, it's not exactly exactly what a skew heap is doing, but it's almost exactly what a skew heap is doing. And the reason why is because just imagine, like, the marble is the thing on the, say, right or left, right? And so if you see a marble over here, then that's the thing that's on the quote-unquote left side. So as soon as the marble gets flipped, what that means is that they swap the two pointers. And so you see that this is kind of, it's just kind of a cool visualization that, um, it's kind of a physical representation of skew heaps. Anyway, I just thought it was neat and uh, and it was worth watching for about a minute. Okay, so that's all I want to show you from that. Um, I just think it's cool and I think it's uh, something that you know makes our makes skew heaps a little bit more. Uh, you know, you could actually build almost like a physical model of a skew heap that way. At least the insertion for a skew heap. I don't know how you would do deletion. Um, can we code project in? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, it may be expensive. It may take you a long time, and it may be uh, very difficult. You might have to make some kind of monstrosity. I, you know, um, but yeah, sure. Uh, project. We accept projects uh, coded in marble machines. If you can build a skew heap marble machine, I would be extraordinarily impressed. Okay, so now I've wasted enough time. I feel like, but I feel like that kind of. If you rewatch it, you kind of see like and think about how um, the marble that's like sitting in there is kind of remembering the previous path that was taken, and then it kind of puts it ensures that every time the next marble will flip to the other channel, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with a skew heap, right? That's exactly why we do those swaps. So we do the swaps because we want to always stick uh, the next marble or alternatively node into the opposite uh, pathway, right? And that's why we swap, because we always insert to the right, but then we swap, so then the thing that was inserted to the right goes to the left and vice versa. So 
unlike in the physical thing, you know, you'd actually have to flip those paths around, which is a little bit more difficult. So anyway, okay. So that's all I really wanted to do on that. And so let's let's talk more about skew heaps and um, leftist heaps today, right? So let's get back to skew heaps and in turn leftist heaps. So remember, basically, the only real operation in a skew or a leftist heap is, and of course you don't know what a leftist heap is yet, but just hang on, is merge, right? And merge takes node one, and it takes node two, and it basically does this, right? If uh, both nodes exist, then what it does is it says, um, if the node one value is, say, bigger than, and let's say that this is a max heap, right? We always have to specify with our heaps, um, because if it's a min heap, then we would want the, the signs to be opposite. So actually, let me do it with a min heap, because that's what your project is. So if the node one value is less than the node two value, then the thing, then what we do is we say, um, you know, our node one dot right is going to be equal to merge of node one dot right and node two, right? And then in the other case, what happens in the other case? The other case is where the node two value is bigger than or equal to the other one. So we can say else, and of course I'm coding this in just like some kind of Pythonic looking pseudo code. It's not exactly any kind of language. I'm just kind of coding it up in, you know, node two dot right is equal to merge of node two dot right and node one. Notice that they, in this case, they actually flip, right? Because the thing that's getting inserted on the right is, is this and the, it actually, so it technically doesn't really matter which one is in the node one or node two uh, spot except for one edge case where you have uh, equal to, and I guess you can always stick the equal to on with node one, or you can stick it on with node two. But anyway, that's it. And then else if uh, just one exists, right? And then what you say is, okay, um, that is the, so let's say it's node one, so then you would say node one, um, node that exists, right? is either equal to node one or node two. And then what you do is you say uh, return, right, node that exists. And here what you're gonna do after you do this process here is then you swap um, node two dot left, node two dot right. And here you're gonna swap node one dot right and node one dot left. And okay, and you always do this if this is a skew heap. And then finally, um, oops, I forget. I always forget the tab doesn't work in Inkscape. It'll just push you to the next thing. Else, you know, uh, return um, like null pointer or something like that. Because if neither of the nodes exist, then you return nothing. Okay, so that's basically all we do here. Um, so if just one node exists, you return it. And then every time you do one of these merge calls, you do a swap afterwards. And this is the this is the definition of a skew heap. And so now let's talk about what a leftist heap does. So a leftist heap uh, is slightly different, okay? And so what it tries to do is it tries to actually maintain a, a kind of a specific imbalance, okay? And so what it tries to do is it tries to make sure that always, um, as, as much as possible, um, our data structure is skewed uh, to the left. All right. So it's possible with the skew heap that since we're flipping all the time, you could have something that's skewed to the left, then skewed to the right, then skewed to the left again, then skewed to the right again, and it's going to keep swapping as you insert. But with the leftist heap, what we want to do is we want to, so let me just specify that this is actually the skew heap merge. Okay, so how are we going to modify? So basically, what I said last time is true, and I just want to repeat what I said last time for, you know, effect. The only difference between the leftist heap and a skew heap is that the leftist heap tracks something called uh, null path length, okay? 
And you might ask, well, what the heck is null path length? So let's define null path length. So here is a, uh, an example. Let's draw some stuff in um, like this. And then let's ask, what is the null path length of all of these nodes? So the null path length is like height um, in, in the sense, OK, it's like height sort of kind of, right? It's, it's more like height than it is like weight, but it's not exactly height. Um, and I'll show you why it's not height. So null path length is defined as the smallest, not the largest, the smallest distance from whatever node we're starting. Uh, for, let's just say from node n, right? Or node s for start node uh, to any null pointer, okay? So that's the question. What's the smallest distance, okay, from the node s to any null pointer? And so let's look at all these different ones. So here, and now of course the, it, we we set, uh, we suffer from the same problem um, as with height, right? The question is what is, and so yeah, the question is what is the height of a single node, right? Or I'm. Sorry, not height. Null path length. So let's just look at a single node, and we have to decide what we want the null path length to be. Now, of course, the thing about null path length is that it, you, you can make any decision you want. You can say that the NPL of this is 17, but that wouldn't really make sense, right? It's just offset by um, uh, you know some fixed number. Um, the question is really the, the two numbers that tend to make the most sense so it tends to be either 0 or, or 1, right? You can say, if I'm at this node, then my distance from a null pointer is that I have to go down the right pointer or the left pointer. If I say I have to go down the left or the right pointer, I would say I have to cross one edge so that the null path length here is 1. On the other hand, some other books say, and some other conventions will say, well, here, your you are the parent of a null pointer, so the distance to a null pointer is you just look at your child, so that's distance zero. So the, um, you see both of those in these cases. Um, and, but in this case, I like to do, honestly, I just kind of like to do things simply. I kind of like to think of this as null path length one, null path length one. If it's a null pointer, right, we can call that null path length zero. So null path length zero is equal to the null pointer itself, null path length 1 is equal to the parent of the null pointer, okay? The node that actually exists. Now, again, so the thing is that if you don't like this convention, uh, that's fine, right? Um, the other convention that I see a lot is NPL of a null pointer um, is equal to minus 1 and the null path length of a, we'll call it like a leaf node or a node with a null pointer of some kind, right? It could, so this is not really a leaf node because it, it does actually have a child, but it also has a null pointer, which we'll get to in just a second. And then you would say that's equal to zero. But, but for this lecture, um, I'm going to stick uh, to uh, the, the one I picked. And you notice that there's not, there's not really a distinction here, um, so it's just a shifting by one. Okay, so, and here's where uh, null path length goes. So here, uh, the null path length here is you have to traverse this edge and then one more edge to get down to a null pointer. So I would say the null path length here is two, right? It's equal to one plus the minimum of the NPL of the uh, left child and the NPL of the right child. And we know that that's almost like height because height is equal to one plus the minimum or the maximum of the height of the left and the height of the right. But here it's actually equal to the minimum. And I'll show you why that matters in just a second um, right here. It's good that I constructed this thing very educationally, I guess. So if you notice here, the null path, you know, if you're talking about heights, you would just be like, oh, height three, easy, right? But with null path length, I always suggest you take an extra second to think about what you're doing because 
sometimes you can get into the mindset of height and forget that you have to be taking the minimum, right? And so here's an interesting thing, right? The null path length on the left is two. The null path length on the right is actually zero because we're heading into a null pointer. So one plus the minimum of two and zero is actually one plus zero. So the null path length here is actually one again. So notice, this is, this is why null path length is a little bit odd. Um, because null path length isn't like height in that it doesn't always increase, right? Here, the null path length is one and one, so this one is two, but this one's one again, right? And so the, the null path length here is one. I don't think you disagree because it's a, it's a leaf node. And then finally here, the null path length here is two again, right? Okay. So let's do some more examples where we calculate MPLs. Let's make another tree structure and calculate some NPLs. So let's see, what's a good tree structure? I don't know, I have to make one up. Um, something maybe like this, and then maybe put something here. This is kind of similar to the previous one, whatever. So let's just draw out something like this. It's it doesn't have to be exceedingly interesting or anything. I don't think there's there's not a lot of like really tricky edge cases with calculating NPL. And if you have a, a computer doing it for you, obviously calculating NPL is way better because uh you know you will make fewer mistakes if you have the algorithm correct. So um, so that's good. But the other thing to say here is, let's just calculate the NPL. So these are all leaves. So the NPL here is 1, uh, NPL 1, NPL 1, NPL 1, NPL 1. OK, cool. Now that's done. So what's the null path length here, right? And here is another one of those examples where it's equal to 1 plus the minimum of 1. And there's nothing over here, so that's 0. So the null path length here is 1 again. And then here, the null path length is one again, right? Because it's the maximum, uh, or I'm sorry, it's the minimum of one and zero. So it's zero plus one. So that's how we get the one. And then here, okay, well first, okay, now we have to calculate left and right. So here it's two. Here it's actually one again, right? Because there's a null pointer. Here it's two. And here it's one again. And so basically the point here is that we're gonna have two and then remember we have two and one here. So it's the minimum, so it's one plus one. So actually the null path length here is two, okay? The null path length here is two. All right, so that's that's basically my explanation of how the all of this stuff works. And I think, I hope it's more or less understandable. I think it might be. So basically just remember uh, that NPL is equal to the minimum right? It's one plus the minimum. And then you can say NPL of a null is zero, right? With these two pieces of information, um, you can basically compute the null, point, uh, null path length of any particular node. All right, well now you know how to compute null path length, right? But you, you're still asking yourself, but wait, you haven't said anything about leftist heaps in a while. So what was all this business about NPL, right? Why did I bother to go through all this mess to define NPL? Of course you know that I'm going to use the null path length to somehow do something and create a leftist heap, but, um, but I just had to go through the examples and kind of show you how to calculate this thing and just, you know, I wanted to, to kind of break your brains a little bit and make sure that you didn't think about it as height, right? Don't think about it as height. It's not height. It's something kind of different. Um, it's like a min property rather than a max property kind of thing. So there's there's a number of differences between uh, NPL and um, and height, but they do kind of function in the same way. Um, remember how weight functions? Weight is kind of weird, right? Because weight is equal to one plus the weight of the left plus the weight of the right uh, is equal to the weight of the node, right? So that's 
that's a different kind of thing because we're not taking the max or the min, we're just literally adding both of them together. And so that's one property. And then there's the max property, which is height, and the min property, which is... Um, interestingly, I guess, I guess the answer is weight, height, and NPL are all properties that can be expressed as one, like one plus F of the left and the right, where F is either is either uh, x plus y, or it's uh, you know f is equal to the min of x plus y and x and y, or f can be equal to the max of x and y, right? I thought you know that's a cool that's a cool way to think about it, right? I kind of like that. Okay, but enough of that. Let's define a leftist heap, right? That's enough thinking about how to you know how to uh, create various kinds of abstractions for what we're doing. So, you know, back to leftist heaps. So what is a leftist heap? So a leftist heap is a skew heap, except, right, or but for, or whatever you want to say, that we only swap if NPL of the left is bigger than, or, or I'm sorry, NPL of the right is bigger than or equal, uh, let's just say bigger than NPL of the left. There we go, done. That's the rule. So we can re, so if everything works the same, insert, um, right, insert is of a node or insert of a value. Uh, what do you do to insert? What you do is you create a new node is equal to node on value, and then you merge, uh, you say the, you know, m root is equal to merge of uh, new node and root, m root, I guess. And then, um, you know, remove max or find max, right, is what? How do you code find max? Well, find max is still the same. Um, basically, what you do is you say, uh, you know, old max is equal to m root uh, dot value maybe arrow value if we're going to do it C++ -y. and then you would say old node is equal to m root then you say m root is equal to merge m root left m root right and you see and then you know what do you oops what do you have to do then delete old node uh, return old max right so this is you might say, but isn't this exactly the same as what we did for, uh, uh, what, what do you call them, skew heaps? The answer is yes, it is identical to skew heap, right? And so you say, okay, well, but what's different? And the difference is here, instead of doing a skew merge, this is gonna be a leftist merge, right? So let's specify that this is leftist, uh, leftist merge, and this will be leftist merge, right? So how is this different? let us check it out, right? So let me copy paste the algorithm. Here's the skew heap merge algorithm, right? And, and now we're gonna say leftist heap, right? Leftist heap merge, which is not quite identical. Let me actually move this stuff here. So this identical means that the insert and the find max are identical but the merge is not quite identical. It's slightly different. Now, of course, I haven't changed it yet, but let's change it. The only things we have to change are these two lines here. We basically just have to say if, um, yeah, if, what should I say? Node one, or yeah, let's say NPL of node one dot left um, is less than the NPL of node one dot right then swap. Okay, and it's the exact same thing here, except instead of node 1, it's just node 2, right? So that is how we go from a uh, skew heap to a leftist heap, and that's exactly it. We just add these two lines here that force it to swap, but it only swaps when the, um, what should I say? Yeah, when the, the left um, NPL is less. We always, whatever structure we're left with, we always want the NPLs on the left side to be bigger than the NPLs on the right side. So that's the rule for 
for a leftist heap is that the NPL of the left should be bigger than or equal to NPL of the right for any node, right? That has the two children left and right. So that's that's the one rule. Basically, it's it's like take a skew heap uh, and add this, right? So a skew heap swaps all the time, but this rule basically restricts when we swap. We only swap um, when what should I say? Yeah, when the NPL of the left is less than the NPL of the right. Okay, so let's actually do this, right? You know, I promised that I would implement this, so let's implement it. Um, let us steal our, where, where is all my code? Um, <laughs> I have to find my sea lion. Here's leftist. Actually, this is all skew heap stuff, but uh, whatever. Let's make a new one. Let's say, uh, let's make a new class. Call it leftist heap. There we go. Um, what am I going to do? I think I'm actually going to, uh, huh. So there's nothing different about a leftist heap node and a skew heap node. So I'm actually going, well, you know what? I'll change it. I'll change it. It's okay. Don't hate me. So. Actually, we can probably even do it simpler by doing this, place all. OK, uh, is that good? Oh, crap. I don't want it to be leftist. Leftist with left, leftist. Let's do that. OK, better. Uh, how, is this good? Uh, looks fine, right? Um, Interesting that it's not rebuilding, so I don't want to avoid that uh, linker error I had yes, uh, two days ago. There we go. Okay, now let's copy-paste the CPP file. And here we go. Well, actually, yeah, let's uh, do that. Scroll up to the top. We have to fix a few things now. Let's change. Ah, you know what? We can just do the replace again. Skew heap with... Ah, we can just replace skew with leftist. Boom. And I think at this point, are we done? And the answer is maybe, right? Everything here is basically done. The only thing we have to do now is um, is do something like that. Oh, yeah, so not quite done, right? Not finished yet. Still have work to do. So the first thing we have to do, because obviously, actually, I, I totally lied, didn't I? I totally lied. Yeah, I totally lied. We need the NPL. <laughs> so let's set the NPL to 1. There we go. Easy. Done. So it's a good thing I didn't just steal the same leftist heap node, because we actually do need an NPL. You have to remember it. It's like an AVL tree where you have to remember the height, or a red black tree where you have to remember the color. You have to remember something else in the leftist heap node. And you might say, well, that makes this leftist block business a bit less efficient, right? Because if you look at the leftist heap and you say to yourself, well, you know, why am I storing all this extra data, right? The answer is, I don't know, because you feel like it, because you uh, want to play this balancing game, right? Um, and to that I say, Okay, right? Um, yep, okay. So now that I fixed that and I did lie, I'm sorry I lied. Um, now let's do a, yeah, let's do this way. So let's say int, uh, where should we put the NPL function? You know, it actually probably, um, technically we should, I mean, maybe we should even just put it in part of the node. I mean, this isn't how you would code up one of these projects because they, they never put any of the extra functions in the node. But let's actually do int, uh, you know, calculate uh, NPL. And so what we'll do here is we'll say if p left uh, and p right 
then what? If p left dot what is it? Um, NPL, not value. NPL, uh, NPL is less than p right. Remember, we're looking for the minimum, right? Less than or equal to uh, p right dot NPL. Then we will say um, NPL is equal to uh, one plus this one. Else, and again, I'm so used to Python. Um, there we go. And then we say else uh, if, oh wait, ah, right. Well, what's the NPL if one of them doesn't exist? Well, if one of them doesn't exist, then the NPL is actually equal to one again. Think about why that is, right? The null path length is just one. And the reason why it's just one is because, um, and of course I should put the else around this because otherwise it will just reset the NPL to one. And then here we'll just return the NPL. There we go. And so that's all we need, right? And basically we just have to, uh, what do we have to do? I guess we just have to assert or we have to make sure that uh, we're actually recalculating NPLs um, as we go back up the tree, right? Uh, so that's that's something we have to remember to do. So that's a little bit of thing that I didn't put into the pseudocode, but we do have to recalculate the MPLs as we go back up. Okay, so here what we're going to do is, right, um, I guess what we'll do is we'll say new subroot dot uh, calculate MPL and I guess it doesn't matter if we calculate it before or after. It'll be the same after we do the swap or not. But yeah, okay, let's do it after just just to be safe. So okay, and then finally, finally, we're almost there, right? We're we're getting close to being done. Um. So yeah, we're getting close to being done. Uh, the only thing we have to do left is put in our favorite if statement, right? And here it's just if, um, what is it? New, I guess, new subroot uh, dot, what is it? P left dot NPL is less than new subroot dot P right dot NPL then we swap. Now, of course, you might say, um, well, what if they don't, what if, you know, not both of them exist, and that's a good point. So let's check, right? There we go. If both of them exist, then we only have to check this, and if that's true, then we swap. And what, what else do we have to do? So um, okay, so if the new subroot.p left and the new subroot.p right, but what if only one of them? Well, what if uh, only the, oh wait, I see, I haven't muted desktop audio, there we go. Uh, new subroot.p left, right? Um, that means that there's only the p left guy, which means that the, the new np, so basically we just require if, ah, well, in that case, we're good, right? So we're okay if the new subroot.p left exists and the new subroot.p right doesn't exist. Think about why that is, right? Uh, in this case, um, we do nothing. So actually, we can remove this case. The only case we actually need is the p right case. And think about why that is. So if, if you have something on the left and, or I'm sorry, if you have something on the left and not on the right, then the NPL on the left is obviously gonna be bigger, so it's gonna be fine. But if you have something on the right, but not on the left, then what you got to do is swap. Now, technically, you're swapping a null pointer, right? Uh, swaps the left null pointer uh, to the right and the right thingy to the left, right? So that's, that's what this does. And then we're just going to recalculate the MPL 
Uh, the reason why we're going to recalculate the MPL, actually, you know what, we can even do that. Well, no, okay, so we need new subroot to exist. Um, if we somehow get to a null pointer, then I guess we don't want to recalculate the MPL of a null pointer, because that's a set fault. But anyway, so here, this is, our, this is our kind of code for the swap. That's all we really have to do, right? So this has just changed a, uh, a skew heap into a leftist heap. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do now is let's change the display because uh, I want, instead of just displaying the value, I want to actually display um, the value and the NPL just so that we can see what's going on and make sure that everything is calculated right. Right, because otherwise uh, we aren't learning anything. So, okay, I think that's it. Now, I'm going to try to compile this thing. If it explodes, then it's not my fault. I didn't do it. But if it doesn't explode, then then maybe we'll actually get a leftist heap out of this thing. So let's see what happens. Um, and instead of let's see, skew heap driver, let's make a uh, leftist heap driver, right? Uh, do I have to reload C? Oh, no, I know it wants to me to reload CMake and all that stuff. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's see. Enable auto reload. So maybe that'll fix that because I, I don't want it to blow up on me, you know? And now I have to include, uh, include uh, leftist. There we go. And I think that should fix everything. I think everything should work now. So, and you see how easy it was to convert from a skew heap to a leftist heap, right? We just have to add this. Basically, this is the block of code we have to add. We do have to add the calculate MPL function into the node, or it, technically, I think a lot of the time in these kinds of projects, at least in 341, you put it in the uh, skew heap class itself for whatever reason. But but notice that actually you can just stick it in the node if you have if you have complete freedom, uh, you should stick stuff like that in the node because if you think about it. The, com the calculate MPL doesn't depend on the whole leftist heap. It just cal it just depends purely on the node's left and right children. So the node can do the calculation itself. It doesn't need the whole skew heap to do the calculation. Anyway, let's run this thing. I'm ready. I think uh, it's time. Let's see what kind of errors we're gonna get. None. All right. So something ran. Um, did I change the main function? I didn't. Got to try again. All right, that ran. So let's insert um, 15. Okay, 15 was inserted with a null path length of one. Let's insert, uh, say, 25. And I, I forget, is this a min or a max heap? I don't even remember at this point. Um, I guess we'll find out in just a second. I think I made it a max heap. It's a max heap, right? 25 is the parent. Um, 15 is the child. And remember, we're still inserting on the right. And that's why the leftist heap tries to swap everything over to the left, because we know that because we're inserting to the right, it's more likely that we're going to end up with a right imbalanced object than a left imbalanced object. And so what we're trying to do is kind of just force the imbalance to the other side, and then we're always going to insert into the quote unquote smaller side. Now, there's a lot of exceptions to what I'm saying, but let's insert 18. Okay, that didn't work. Ooh, bug. Oh, oh wait, no, I didn't type insert. Um, the bug was I am a bug. I literally did not. Okay. Um, okay, and so now you notice that it updated the MPL. So here it did not update the MPL to two because there was nothing on the right side. But here there's 18 on the right side, so it updated the MPL. So let's do this again. Let's insert, um, say, uh, 22, right? And that should give us something. So notice what it did here, right? It wanted to merge the 18 over to the right, but then it noticed that there was nothing over to the left, so it did the swap, right? And let's insert again. Let's insert, um, let's insert 14, I guess. So 14 should come down here, all the way down to the right. It should be basically where this insert is. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to upgrade the NPL of this to 2, and then when this guy compares NPL of 1 to NPL of 2, then it'll swap it up. So hopefully we'll see 15, 8, or I'm sorry, 22, 18, 14, and then we'll see 15 down here and 25 as the root. There we are. So we see that 22 got swapped up, and the reason why is because, remember, up is left and down is right. So because up is left and down is right, um, and we saw that this guy had an MPL of 2, and this other, other dude had an MPL of 1, then uh, 2 beats 1, and so it swaps up. So we notice that this thing is going to, let's, let's keep going, let's insert, say, uh, let's insert 35 and see what happens. So basically the point is that 35 would probably go to this side, oh, I'm sorry, it would become the new root, that's what I really mean. It's going to become the new root, and then the rest of the tree is going to go down, right, to the right. But the NPL is 2 here, the NPL of this child here would be 0. So what we're going to see is that it's going to swap everything up. Right, so then if we insert, say, 30, insert, say, uh, 27, maybe, uh, insert 5, insert um, 3, maybe, right? And so here's, an, uh, here's another example, insert, say, um, 4, insert 6, insert 7. And you might say, to your, oh, whoops, um, so here you might say to yourself, if you're just looking here before I did the, the last one, so just look at this one. So notice here there's one, two, three, four, five, six nodes here, and there's one, two, three, four, five nodes here. But left is up and down is right. So you notice that a leftist heap does not, does not force the weight to be balanced to the left. It's not always balanced to the left. There are a lot of cases where a leftist heap will actually have more nodes on the right side than on the left side. Um, but the point is, that that's kind of, it's kind of a temporary condition. And of course, I went too quickly and inserted seven already. So let me scroll down and let's look at when, when, when I inserted seven and see what happens. So here, the NPLs don't detect that it's starting to get a little bit heavy, right? Because here, the NPL here is two, the NPL here is two, NPL here is two, two, one, 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 right? The NPL here is one. So basically, from the perspective of null path lengths, if you kind of put the blindfolds on, you can't really tell the difference between this guy and this guy. They're both basically the same. But, 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 when you insert seven, notice what happens, right? Seven is gonna go all the way down to the right and come in here. So that's gonna upgrade the NPL of 27 to two. What happens when you upgrade the 20, uh, null path length of 27 to two? Then the point is that the null path length here gets upgraded to three. And of course, this was down on the right, and then three beats two. So you see that how once it gets to kind of this like perfect tree, this uh, this structure where it's kind of filled out completely, then it's going to say, wait, 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 I'm too heavy, I'm too heavy on this side, right? And then it's going to flip it to the left side. So that's when the null, that's when the leftist heap is going to flip, right? It flips it when the thing notices, when the null path lengths notice that it's become too right heavy. And again, so let me just draw out some examples for you. Let me go back to my document. So if you notice, you and if you think about it, there's a lot of cases where you can make null path. So um, let's do something like this on the left maybe. Um, and let's put four children in here kind of joined in the obvious way. And then let's put the right guy over here, the right girl over here, and just kind of do this, right? Now, of course, you might say, like, well, this, this shape may not be possible according to the, the rules of insertion and merge and all that stuff, but I don't care. So you might say, you know, this, this structure may not be producible by uh, the leftist heap algorithm. But the question at this point is, is this a leftist heap? And can it, does it detect the fact, like how many nodes are here? I guess this is seven, right? Because it's uh, two to the three minus one, so seven. There are seven nodes here, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 here. So, but the, but the question here is, is it going to detect 
the imbalance and is it going to fix the imbalance? And the answer is going to be no, and I have to draw in all these arrows in order to get to be able to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you that while I'm drawing in the arrows, right? As we see here, there's 12 nodes on this side, right? 12 on this side. Um, there's seven over here. Clearly there's a weight imbalance, right? Definite weight imbalance. Obviously there's a height imbalance, right? To the, to the right. There's a weight imbalance to the right. There's a height imbalance to the right. But is there an NPL imbalance? So NPL imbalance? <laughs> And the answer is going to be, well, no, and let's calculate. So here, the MPLs are going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. NPL of 3. Here we got 1, 1, but then the note, I'm just going to draw them inside the circles. 1, 1, 1, 1. So those are all the NPLs there. The NPL here is 2, but then the problem here is that the NPL of this, this one is also 2. Because it's remember it's the minimum, so the minimum of one and two is one. So the minimum NPL here is two, 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 and two. So the answer here is that when when you're sitting in, at the root and you're looking down and you say who's heavier, right? And the only question you get you don't get to ask the weight question, you don't get to ask the height question, you only get to ask the null path length question, which is what the leftist heap does. When you only get to ask the null path length question, then the point is that what you're going to do is you're going to basically say, well, from what I can see, this one is lighter than this one, at least in terms of NPLs. And again, you might say like, but that's ridiculous. There's no way that that's going to, you know, you might say a lot of things like that. But um... oh, I'm sorry, this is actually not a leftist. This is not a leftist heap. Right, because the they mismatch here, right? I want to actually make this a leftist heap. So let me make this a leftist heap, and fix it. Here it is. There. Sorry. So, um, ah, but then this is imbalanced too. So basically, I have to shift all of this to the left. Um, all right, let's do the swaps to make this a leftist heap again. I think I added too many nodes to, to prove my point, and then I accidentally broke the leftist property, which I actually don't want to do. I want this thing to be a leftist heap, so let's make it into one again. Yeah, the null path length always has to be bigger on the left. So let's do this. Then we can actually just shift everything maybe over like that. Then we can do this, then one more to make it work. So I was really only thinking about this one here, but I, I don't I actually don't want to give you the impression that the thing that I'd drawn was was a completely valid leftist heap because it, it was kind of wrong. This is better, right? So okay, there we go. But anyway, the point the point is the same. Even though this all goes to the left, you might say like, but the point is this is still right imbalanced. Um, but the, the question is, why is this okay? Like, why aren't we more panicked about this, right? You know, and the answer is, if you think about how the insertion for this kind of thing is going to work, what it's going to do, right, what's the next insertion path? Well, the next insertion path is going to be to the right. So it's going to stick in some nodes as the children here until um, this one so what it's actually so let me show you what it's going to do. So the next thing it's going to do uh, when you insert is it's going to try to insert everything to the right, and so it's going to make this. Whoops. Darn. Okay, Inkscape crashed. Wonderful. Um, Inkscape is great, except it just has that instability issue. Um, I looked around and I used other programs in the past. I just. I guess I'm just willing to accept the uh, instability problem. Man, we lost a lot though. Let's steal. Let's steal this, and then we can kind of make this into the other one again. 
So this is basically what we had going on on the uh, right side. So we'll steal this for the right side. And then I will deal with this in just a second. And so this is this. And let's draw in some of the NPLs. So this one is this. This one's going to be three now. Um, and then we're going to have to flip all this over to the right side. Whoops, I don't want that. So let's get it back. There we go. And then here we go, right? Uh, there we are. Good enough, right? It's not exactly quite as... It's not exactly the same as it was before, but the point is it's basically the same, and that's good enough for us. So here, uh, the null path length here is actually 3, right? And the null path length here is still 2. The null path length here is 3, and that's that. Okay, so I'm going to, like, you know, mash the save button now, from now until infinity. Uh, the null path length here is, is 1, not 2. I think I, I think I messed with that, so I think that that was just a, a result of surgery, you know? So, okay, let's think about this. So, um... Why is this, why are we not as panicked about this, right? Um, right, it's it's going to be like weight imbalanced, maybe like height imbalanced, uh, but we're not panicked. And the reason why we're not panicked is that, uh, look at how it's going to insert. Okay? So let's, let's play around and just like look how it's going to insert. So it's going to insert all the way to the right. So the first new node it's going to get is going to go here, right? And then the node here is going to upgrade the NPL of that. Well, actually, let's just, count, let's just do this. So the NPL of this is going to be 1. And then we're going to have a, an NPL of 2 here, right? And then where's the next node going to go? Right, the next node is going to go all the way to the right. Which is fine, right? Because what it's going to do is it's actually going to do something like this. Now, if it's going to go to the right, remember the NPL of this node, the, the null point over here is 0. So the, the NPL over here is 1. So it's going to swap over to here, right? It's going to swap. And then we're going to get yet another one. If we insert again, we're going to get another one like this, which is going to go like, like that. And then what do we do there? Then we say, oh, look the null path lengths are changing again. So the null path length here becomes two. Um, and the null path length here was still one. So that means we're gonna have to swap these, which is unfortunately gonna be a little bit of careful. Um, careful surgery here. And then this is gonna happen. The answer is you do have to rebalance near the top, but we haven't gotten up there yet, right? We haven't, if you mean rebalancing here, uh, the answer is we do. Unless the null path length was already two there, um, in which case I did it wrong. But it's too late to go back now, so, and then even if I missed it, so here's how it's gonna work, so then we're gonna take all this off here, and we're going to stick this, yep, I must have, I just didn't see it. So then we're going to swap this. It's actually kind of difficult to draw all this stuff. Okay, so this is back to being right again. Um, let's keep doing some insertions. So the next insertion is going to go in here, and that's going to upgrade the null path length here to 2. And the two children here are just 2 and 2, so that's still okay. Then the next insertion is going to go here, and it's going to swap over to the left. And then the next insertion is going to go here, and then it's going to upgrade this one to a null path length of 2 here, and then we have to do the swap. So you see that the, the null path lengths are actually kind of keeping this thing balanced, and what it's going to do is it's going to kind of force us to fill in the vast majority of this tree until this thing actually gets to NPL of 3. Actually, no, it has to get up to NPL of 4 
at which point then it'll start swapping back and then we'll start inserting on the other side. So null path length actually is kind of making sure that we're always swapping into... I guess the way to think about it is even if this even if the tree over here is bigger, even if the even if the thing is more complicated over here, has a is higher, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, we're actually I think the thing it's guaranteeing is we're always inserting into the absolute shortest uh, path to a null pointer, right? That's that is an actual true statement about the uh, the leftist heap. And so that's what it's guaranteeing us is that we're always inserting into the absolute shortest path because if you think about it, what are we calculating, right? We're, all of these distances are really distances to a null pointer and we always insert to the right and we know that the, the null, point, uh, null path length on the left is bigger than the right. So we know that the, yeah, so basically let's list all the things we know, right? We know that the NPL of the left is bigger than or equal to the NPL of the right. Uh, we know that the we know we're always inserting to the right, so therefore we're always uh, we're always inserting uh, towards the lowest NPL. So we're inserting, um, and same thing as three, three prime, uh, same thing. Uh, we're always inserting uh, towards the nearest uh, null pointer, right? which means we can stick in a node at the fastest position. And then the, what the swaps do, the swaps ensure that the next time we insert, the NPLs are still correct and that the NPL, um, and that the uh, fastest path to a null pointer is still uh, all the way to the right. Now, that is, and, and I think that is the thing here that we can say. Uh, this is the advantage over a skew heap, right? A skew heap is doing kind of what the marbles did. Just A, B, A, B, A, B. Flips back and forth every time, right? And that what that's doing for us a little bit is it's it's kind of acting like a leftist heap, but it's just swapping every time. It doesn't care. It, it, it puts the blindfolds on. It doesn't know anything about null path lengths. It's not trying to stick it into the shortest path. It's just... It's just evenly distributing things among the paths. But you know that when you do a deletion, right, all the paths can get really messed up. And so that's, that's the important thing here, is that um, if you're just inserting um, basically skew and, and, and leftist are about the same. Uh, but when you uh, delete, right, or when you uh, find max and therefore delete the root and uh, remerge, that's when leftist uh, does a little better, right? Because what leftist is going to do is it's going to make sure that when we remerge, the shortest path is still all the way to the right, and um, there we go. And then we can, when we start doing more insertions, we're happy, right? And so that's the point. So it's always there's some really weird cases that you can make out of out of skew heaps. Um, so there's some weird cases that you can make out of skew heaps or, or leftist heaps, and this is one of the weird cases, right? Um, I guess here actually, if we upgrade this NPL, I, I haven't finished all the swaps. I guess I should finish the swaps here. Um, let's do this. So you notice here that the NPL here is still two. The NPL here gets promoted to three when they're equal. There's no so the 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 concept of the leftist heap doesn't really specify what to do when they're equal. I prefer just not to swap because um, if they're equal, it's kind of, I don't know, it feels to me that uh, how do you know that this one isn't the heavier one than this one? And the answer is you technically don't. So uh, I constructed it this way, but there's no reason to think that if one of them just gets to three and the other one has been at three for a while, that this one's going to be bigger or heavier or taller or something like that. There's no reason to think that. Um, but notice that when does this actually swap? And so the answer is, oh, and the cool thing is, let's actually copy paste this so that, so that you can actually see when this thing swaps. So this structure is going to swap in about two more nodes. So watch this. We do this one. Don't crash on me, please. 
Uh, we take this guy, we copy paste, there we go. And so now we have to recalculate everything. So uh, here the null path length is two again. Um, let's see if I can copy paste to two, I did. Let's see if I can copy paste to three. I did. Okay, so now at this point, we're very close to swapping. Well, okay, we are gonna swap here. So this gets swapped here, like this, but that's not the swap I'm actually waiting for. I'm waiting for the, the big one, right? This one here. But, but you see why we're so close, because now that this one is over here, and now that this one has only one spot left before this guy hits null path length three, then this guy hit null path length four, and then we're gonna have an imbalance that we can detect. So let's put another node in here. That node will get inserted all the way to the right. And there we are. No swapping actually has to be done here, right? The only distinction here is that now this is null path length two, so I'm gonna delete that. This is null path length th three here. I'll copy paste that. And now for our favorite thing ever, right? This is null path length four. And so now we know that it's time. Right, because when you're sitting up at this root, you say, wait a second, wait a second, my null path length is now four, but the more important thing than my null path length being four, like we don't really care so much about the null path length of the root. What we do care about is that if we swap these two things, right, uh, or not, and the answer is, look at this, the, the null path lengths don't match anymore, or they do, they don't match anymore in the sense that this one is bigger, so you have to do, uh, basically, once you've done all the recalculation, ugh, Let's see, come on. It's, it's fighting me a little bit because I'm, I'm doing a lot. So there we go. Now let's do the swap and make everybody happy, right? Put this here. And then this is going to have to be even longer because, wait, what have I done? Oh, no, OK, I understand now. I was like, wait, we have two of them? Doesn't make sense. There we go. Yes. So now this is the end result. So you see that it, it does kind of take care of itself and it does eventually force a left balance. But some of the time it can it can definitely be right weighted and it can definitely be right tall if we just haven't inserted enough nodes and this one's kind of sparse and this one's more filled out. So that's that's the moral of the story for this kind of stuff. Okay. So that's really all on leftist heaps that I want to do. I mean, I think I think we've talked about leftist heaps until um, until we're sick of them, right? Um, I guess the only thing left to do is maybe just a little bit of this. So there's also a leftist heap visualization here, but I think I've basically done done my job for leftist heaps. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to. I would suggest that you do a little bit of it, so you can actually just see. And remember, it's I think these are min heaps. So if you want to make it a min heap, let's insert like three. And and here you notice that their convention is that the null path length of a given node is zero, of a of a leaf node is zero. But we're gonna ignore them. And yep, it's a min heap. Um, let's do fourteen. I just want to insert a bunch of stuff. Uh, Sixteen. Let's insert two, just to make it weird. Let's insert 14 again. Skip forward, 13. Skip forward, uh, 22. Skip. And you notice here that we're about to reach a point where we might have to do some kind of, well, we're not quite there yet. So let's say uh, five. And then here we'll insert, say, seven. And then we'll insert uh, 18 again, or 18 maybe the first time. And then 55. Hang on, we're almost there. Pause. OK, we're almost there. So step, cool. So now that this is a perfect tree, right? Full and complete. So basically now that upgrades this null path length to 1, upgrades this null path length to 2. Come on, there you go. And now it sees that 2 is going to be bigger than 1. When is it going to see that? Okay, now it's going to swap. 
So now you see that basically the point is that, um, I, you know what, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's remove the smallest after we've done this and just see what happens, right? So here we go, I'm gonna step forward. So who's the min? Three's the min. So then here we're gonna get that, the, it, we're gonna insert this whole thing on the right. So here's a good example of how um, in, uh, find max or remove smallest or whatever messes up your null path length um, balancing. And so here it is, right? And the only rebalance that we're gonna do is we're gonna swap this like this, but remember that this guy still has a null pointer on the right side now. So this one's null, null path length is still zero, even though it has a tree of height two sitting all the way down here, right? And so the point is that you are not actually going to be able to do anything with this tree. Like, this is a weird structure. But if the question is, is this a leftist heap? Your answer is one and zero, yep. Um, remember, these don't balance with this, right? This balances with the other child that doesn't exist over here. So like two and say negative one or something, right? Because if this is zero, then the height of a null pointer is negative one. So here we get two and negative one. We'll get one and one, that's balanced zero, 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 zero. So that's all balanced and we're done, right? So if you look at this, you might think, well, that is a horrific unbalanced object that just isn't a leftist, you know, it's not a thing that's on the left. But the answer is that uh, unfortunately, Sometimes that just happens. So let's do another remove smallest and see what happens. So here, uh, five is going to be the root. And so you see, it's gonna correct itself a little bit this time, because it's gonna insert the seven over to the right side. And then it doesn't have to do anything, right? No swaps are required because this has a null path length of one and this has a null path length of two. Let's see what happens. One more remove smallest. Okay, so it's going to merge on the right as usual. So here we go, merge there. So now it's gonna stick seven in here, and now it's gonna stick 55 over there. So then it's gonna to have to do a bunch of swaps. So it's gonna to have to swap there. Uh, no swap here, right? Because there's not a child over here, so it's, that's okay. No swap required. And then here it's gonna to have to swap because this actually does have both children. So swap it, cool. And then are, is a swap required at the last step? The answer is nope, because they're both one. And again, you see, right? You might say, well, come on, right? Why don't we call it a rightist thing? Because we're always inserting to the right and it's often that the right is heavier. The answer is because the null path lengths on the left are always bigger than or equal, right? And so it's, you can end up with all these like right heavy conditions. Um, so just because it's called a leftist heap does not necessarily mean that it's always going to be left heavy or that you know the only things that you can trust in a leftist heap are null path lengths okay all right so i think i can end class maybe five minutes early today because i was going to talk about array based heaps but i'll just do that next week um we'll talk about array based heaps on tuesday and then on thursday we'll do um what, what is that thing? Uh, a binomial heap. It's uh, one of my favorite data structures is the binomial heap. And I think it's, it's pretty cool. They're, I'm not going to say that they're efficient. I'm not going to say that they're great, but I think that they're just really neat. And so I like to look at them. These are kind of ugly. I think they're ugly, but actually I think leftist heaps perform pretty good as heaps um, in general. Okay. All right, I think that's it for now. Uh, I guess I'll left, but I'll left. My God, I didn't even mean to do that. I've been saying left too much today. I'll let everyone go. Um, I'll think about posting the code for the leftist heap up on the uh, GitHub. The only, I'm, I'm just a little nervous because I don't want people to just kind of copy paste the code directly into your projects, right? You gotta think about it. I want you to rewrite the code yourselves. Um, that kind of that kind of thing. So, and you see how easy it is to make a, a skew heap out of a leftist heap. You can literally just delete a few lines of code and then you have a skew heap again. Um, but you can always review the videos. I think that's definitely one of the main ways to, um, to learn this stuff. 
Because I think, I, 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 unless there's some bugs in the code, I think it actually works. Huh. I think, uh, how do you remove max? Is it find max or something? Find. Let's see what find does here. Yep, there we go. And you see here, here's another example where it's right heavy, um, because this is all on the right. So, and then let's run find again, just to see what happens. Here it kind of balances out a little bit. But it, basically the entire point here is that the leftist heap is completely dependent on the structure of the individual values, right? So it depends, like that, the, the shape of how the leftist heap turns out is dependent on not just the NPLs, but it's also dependent on the, um, the actual relative values. So like 27 is bigger than five kind of thing. And when you merge them together, then five is gonna get merged on the right of 27 and that kind of thing. So basically um, that's how it would work. Now, if, this, if it were the other way and this were two instead and all the numbers worked out here, then we would merge this on the right all the way down to here and you would get this weird mega right imbalanced thing that might actually get flipped. It would probably get flipped to the left, but the, no, actually it wouldn't even get flipped to the left because uh, because there's not two children here. So yeah, it would even, it would just be a mega right imbalance looking thing uh, again, if we if that was the case. Okay. All right, I'll let you all go. Um, have a good rest of your day. That's it. That's as left as we can get. <laughs>